Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. A husband overhears his wife talking to a friend about plans for the train she plans to. Today's story with a similar plot. Enjoy watching it. Sometimes life gives you a lot of lemons, sometimes not. The main thing is how you get through it. I have spent my entire adult life putting the needs of others first, whether it was my parents, my wife, or my children. I sacrificed my desires by pushing them aside. Case in point, my wife and I got married young because I got her pregnant. Remembering that period, I am no longer sure that I loved her. Our three children were almost 20, and my wife and I were very successful in our careers. I was the CFO of a mid-sized company here in the Bunas. Since I took my vows, I have never looked at another woman my entire married life. Lauren, my wife, or real beauty, was the head of the art department at the local university. She was a natural blonde, tall, with large breasts and wide hips. After giving birth, she became more snug than slender. We both completed our degrees online. Daniel, my eldest, joined the service to further his education and did so well that, thanks to the help of a senator, he was invited to an officer's course because of his grades. Our daughter Caroline got married right out of high school and also studied online. Her husband was a good guy, but he hadn't achieved anything yet. My youngest, my namesake, just signed with a minor league team. I carefully attended all university social events where senior staff were expected to be present. Let's be honest, I got along with all those liberal socialist snobs like sour cream and peanut butter. As head of the arts department, we had to attend every play, every concert, and every guest lecturer. Most of them were clearly left-wing. My wife was into these things, but I wasn't. As a result, politics were not discussed in our home. Every spring break, my wife and four of her co-workers went on a mini-vacation. This year was their tenth trip. Each year, they chose a new location for the cultural experience. This was supposed to be a time to expand their understanding of the basics of humanity. This year it was Jamaica. Over the years, when someone left, new people joined, but the group always remained dense, five women. This year they were scheduled to fly from Cape to St. Louis and then to their destination. I was downstairs working in my workshop at the back of the house on yet another project my wife decided we needed to do. I swear she found projects for me to keep us apart. Every guest we had was amazed at the quality of work they saw. The biggest job I've ever done was designing and building her new kitchen after I tore down a non-load-bearing interior wall. The lockers had all the modern conveniences. Her island, overlooking the dining and living areas, could seat six. The white pine floors and custom countertops made it absolutely gorgeous. I caused a power surge that disabled one of the main circuit breakers, cutting off power to the workshop. I went out into the backyard because our electrical panel was built in and hidden in the wall behind a picture in the family room we added. I had just turned on the switch when I heard my wife's cell phone ring. I don't know who she was talking to, but I didn't like what I heard from her lips. I go on spring break every year because it allows me to get out and about and have fun, Lauren said. The last day of school is Thursday. We all take sick leave and fly out on Friday. We have nine nights and ten days to get everything we want without hurting anyone and keeping our reputation spotless. Those who are already pepper will always be a lot of salt. I quietly walked outside and sat at the picnic table for a moment to compose myself. Once I collected my thoughts, I knew what I needed to do. I returned to the workshop to go upstairs as if I had just walked up. Lauren was still on the phone. I took the keys to my Ford truck after shouting that I was going to the store. I walked outside and headed to my favorite local hardware store. On the way, I called one of the husbands of the ladies who were planning to go to tell him what I had heard. He also had suspicions. He said he would call the others and arrange a meeting for beer. In the city, the building materials store had a new name and a new owner. The family sold it to the group but retained the old residence. I was looking for Dennis Pot a lifelong friend whose father had bought land all over the county for as little as possible at tax sales. I needed a plot of land anywhere as cheaply as possible, preferably with a barn. He was in touch. I was lucky enough to have a 25-acre property near Knob Noster in Johnson County, Missouri. It was only about 300 meters from here, near Kansas. 
Dennis made multiple attempts to sell it without success. He came out for a break so we could chat. I'm glad we did. I got the whole package for much less than the cost of a city lot here. It was next to a state park full of trees and a small military base nearby. We agreed to meet at the notaries on Monday after work to complete the deal. I think he was just glad to get rid of it. That same night, I created a new corporation online. Her shares will be entirely owned by my 401k. Everything I invest will be a loan to shareholders. Whatever I bring out will come from there. If I sell the company, taxes will not be due until my retirement. Every couple of years, I went hunting for fun. No one in the family ate the game, so if I killed something, I would give it to the butcher, keep a few steaks for myself, and donate the rest to the food bank. Going into work on Monday, I made sure I could take the month off for a hunting trip. At least, that's what my family thought. That was all I could talk about, it drove my family crazy. Nobody liked it, especially my wife. I thought to myself that at least her special friends wouldn't laugh at me behind my back. When I get back, her bachelorette party will only be two weeks away. The week before I left, my youngest son, Dean, was getting in the car to go to spring practice with the team. I went out to his car and gave him an envelope. He looked at me as he took it. This is a reserve fund for emergencies, he said. Ally, we both know you'll have to find a part-time job to make ends meet. Use it wisely. He looked into the envelope. Dad, this is too much. Look at it this way, if you become very successful, you can pay me back, I replied. Just be true to yourself and follow your dreams. He looked at the envelope. Okay, Dad. I was up early Saturday morning to look at my new property before my wife woke up. I used accrued sick days instead of vacation pay. The journey took five to six hours. I contacted a local logging company and they met with me to evaluate the site. They needed to see it to decide if they wanted the trees. It took us a couple of hours to walk around the site. The ground was almost flat and a pleasant stream flowed through it. The pines were mature and tall. They offered me a good price, took all but 20 feet of the property line, and agreed to clean up after themselves if I shared the costs with them. The barn was built on a concrete slab and had running water. It had good bones. They started work two weeks later, first in the barn area. They said they would have to widen the access road and upgrade it before they could start. We agreed to share these costs and pay when the work was completed. I spent the weekend camping while waiting for the county office to open on Monday morning. I received written permission to live in my 40-foot travel trailer while I transformed the barn into my new home. I bought a new mobile phone and activated it using my new address. Everything I have done since meeting Dennis Pot has been done through an online limited company I created. I spent the rest of the time tearing apart the insides of the barn, removing old hay bales, stalls, and any trash that could be burned. The small second floor at the back of the barn, the attic, was still intact but needed sanding down. The roof needed re-roofing, but otherwise, everything was in good condition. All that was needed was painting. When I get back, I can use my leaf blower to clear away dust, cobwebs, and dead bugs. Usually, when I went on such trips, sometimes I returned home earlier if I managed to get the required amount of game, but this time it wasn't my year. I didn't bring anything. I spent two weeks working to get started while keeping myself in good physical shape. When I returned, my wife seemed surprised at how good I looked. I returned to work to notify them of my departure. It was time to do something different in life. The day before my wife left on her trip, I finished her latest project. It just needed painting. I noticed that the things she was packing weren't what a wife or mother would normally wear on vacation. I accompanied her when she went on a little vacation with five girlfriends like all the other husbands. We then went to the Golden Corral for breakfast. The next morning, all the ladies' phones were switched off. No one took their laptops with them, as work was the last thing on their minds. I handed over the money I agreed to. They will cover my share in the execution of our plans. Over the next nine days, their Facebook pages will be filled with vivid memories of the trip. The person we hired said they were easy to hack. For those intimate encounters that were recorded, there will be a link to watch the full video. Click here. The video will be stored in the cloud. 
they will all return to an altered reality. It was expensive, but damn it was worth it. I returned home to prepare my trailer and make sure it was ready to go. I started packing my tools and equipment as compactly as possible, trying to save space. We had a surprise end of day event on Friday night to wish me luck in whatever I was going to do. Earlier this week, I took out half of our total cash assets in the form of a bank draft. I received my final salary, including paid vacation and sick leave. My retirement funds were transferred to a new 401k that I set up. From day one, I always bought US bonds through payroll, cashed them in without my wife knowing, and invested the funds through my financial planner. He agreed to sell my shares and transfer the net amount directly to bank near Knob. All funds were deposited into a corporate account for which I had already received a credit and bank card. Now, there were about $600,000 in this account. Everything I deposited into the corporate account was recorded as an interest-free loan. Once the divorce is finalized, I will split everything. Everything I did was aimed at protecting myself from losing all my property in the event of a divorce. On Saturday morning, I sent an email to my kids from a new email address since I had closed all the previous ones. It said, Dear children, that's what your mother explained to someone she was trying to get to go with her on spring break. I go on spring break every year because it allows me to run wild and have fun. The last day of school is Thursday. We all take sick leave and fly out on Friday. We have nine nights and ten days to get everything we want without harming anyone and keeping our reputation impeccable. Those who already have pepper will always find plenty of salt. My cell phone is disconnected. I quit my job and took half of our funds. Look at your mom's Facebook page if you need further explanation. You can contact me through this new email address if I turn on my laptop. Tell her that she can contact William Connors, my lawyer, to discuss the terms of the divorce. Let her know that now she can have all the pepper she wants. Now she can live her liberal life to the fullest and spread her legs for anyone. P.S. Someone needs to meet your mom at the airport on three Sundays. I can't. I left. The last thing I did for our old house was leave her new trinket rack on the kitchen counter filled with ten small jars of black pepper. Before flushing my wedding ring down the toilet, I threw my discarded old cell phone on what was our bed. After locking up the house, I left in the truck towing my trailer, both filled with things I wanted to take with me. Life has given me a lot of lemons. I peeled them and cut them, eating them raw. My father once said that there's nothing in life worth fighting about unless it is for the sake of your country. He was right. We all have the right to live the way we want. Lauren made her choice, which forced me to make mine. Here I was at 40 years old, starting my life over. Dennis Pott, a true friend, gave me a good start. Driving through a small town near my new home, I noticed that the only convenience store and gas station were for sale. I decided to look into this when I stopped by. I bought a cold soda and a bag of beef jerky. It was in need of modernization, as it gave the impression of being a family-type store. The woman who worked at the store and I struck up a conversation. It was her parents' store, and they wanted to retire. All my life, I've made money by appraising people. I asked her why she didn't buy it. She replied that then the operation would have frozen as it is. She wouldn't have the funds to expand for at least five years. This would provide a good income even after paying all the staff, but not enough profit for the bank to consider giving her a loan for expansion and modernization. I held out my hand to her. I'm Dean Keel. I just bought 25 acres here recently. The logging company should be there right now. I'm G. Sexton. So you're the city guy who bought the old brown place, she said. My parents are your neighbors. What are your plans for the place? I'm going to turn the barn into my new home, I explained. Hopefully, the electric line is already installed so I can start on Monday when the first shipment of lumber arrives. There's already plumbing. Not sure if I'll use the local sewer or install a septic tank. The local sewer system is better. There were problems here in the winter, she said. Thanks for the advice, I replied. Do you know anyone in the area who would be willing to work for cash for a few months? My best friend recently lost his job. He's a little lost and without any specific skills but would be happy to learn, said G. I really need help building a house, I said, writing down my number. Do me a favor and write a plan for what you would do if you had the funds for this place. 
get cost estimates, and show me a two-year cash flow forecast based on how you think it will affect sales, I said. Come see me, and we'll talk it out together. Are you serious? Asked G with excitement. Seriously enough to consider it, I replied with a smile. You know where I'll live. If the car is there, that means I'm there. What kind of trailer? Asked G. The county let me live in it while I built the house, I laughed. I was surprised how much was cleared. The stumps were pulled out and piled up with tree branches. Once dry, they will burn for many days. Gravel and fine sand were brought in to form a properly wide driveway for heavy equipment. Part of the cost of this will go into my income. The power company has installed the power line and is ready for me to connect. It is laid along the new road, which suits me as agreed. They stopped 20 feet from the barn. I backed into the trailer and began to set it up when the supervisor of the work crew working that Saturday approached me. I explained who I am and what I do. I asked him if he knew anyone with a backhoe who could do an urgent job. He asked what I needed to do, and I explained. He said he would wait until the end of his shift and stay to do it for me. The barn was almost 40 foot tall, so I decided to leave a 3 foot crawl space at the front of the first floor. By 8 in the evening, a trench had been dug around the barn, and the ground was leveled so that the slope sloped away from the barn. On Sunday, while driving around the area, I found a place that sold rebar, and they cut me the required number of rods, 3 feet long. I built a 3 foot concrete wall at the base of the barn and along 3 sides all the way to the end to prevent unwanted water from entering. This will be completed with a freshly poured 5 feet wide paving slab. Jeannie arrived two weeks later on Sunday. The foundation for the rear deck was already poured, and the sewer line was connected to the county line with a connection for my trailer. Sixteen huge piles of tree roots and branches were burning. The new floor of the first floor had been laid. All rooms on the first floor were framed, and openings for doors and windows were cut out. Two stairs to the next level had already been installed. The small second floor of the barn will become a sitting area with a huge window instead of attic doors. Before rising to the third floor, that's where she found me. I was working on installing one-inch plywood for the second floor. Hey Dean, you took this seriously. I'm impressed with what you did, she said. You've already framed the first floor. It's going to be huge. Why did you cover all the outside walls with plywood? Hi G, I replied. You're right, even with six-inch thick exterior walls, I didn't realize how much space I'd get by doing it this way. One-inch plywood will allow me to restructure the barn in the future without damaging the inside. Thanks for bringing CJ. He really helps a lot. He's becoming a good builder and adapts quickly. We work 12 hours a day, and he doesn't complain. I told him to take a day off today. I stood in front of her. At that moment, I realized that she must have had a raised floor behind the counter in the store. I towered over her. I'm six foot tall, and she's only five feet six inches. We went to my trailer. I made coffee before we started our discussion. Her proposal was impressive. Her sales have grown by 10% in the last five years. She wanted to double the size of the store. She saw the main growth in alcoholic beverages, which she wanted to add to the range. A percentage of these customers would probably buy something else. She wanted to work around the clock because the extra hours would only require payment. It was nice to see that she understood business. I suggested that the night shift employees also clean the floors and bathrooms, which would save the $2,000 a month they were paying for the cleaning service. Upgrading to a computer system, charging for air, and adding a self-service car wash with an outside dog wash on the far side of the property will create additional revenue. She could make accounting entries slowly using a commercial system, thereby reducing her accountant's bills to a one-time payment at the end of the year. Oh yeah, a third-party company should be entrusted with maintaining payroll. With the price of gasoline increasing by one cent per gallon, that alone could generate enough money to cover the mortgage. We agreed over coffee to form a new limited company where we both contributed the same amount of money. I borrowed the additional $150,000 required at the current federal rate as an open mortgage on the building and land from my 401k. She called her father and told him about our plans. He said he would take it seriously when he met me. Why don't you both come to dinner? 
Tell him he can bring his wife, Chi said. I'm single but not married, I said. I just started a divorce. I told her how it happened. Chi was surprised that I was 40 years old. She thought I was younger. She was also divorced. Her only daughter at 16 was almost on her own. She got married right after school and was 34 years old. It seemed like her father wanted to evaluate me himself. He listened while we talked about her plans. We told him about my proposals. The only thing he noticed was that with the changes we were making, we were understating our sales and projected net income. He agreed to remove the advertisement for sale since I was buying it for his daughter. There won't be any trouble. He lowered the price to reflect the savings on commissions. She was delighted. I honestly told her mother that the food she prepared was the best I had eaten in the last three weeks. I returned to my trailer, and after making coffee, I turned on my laptop to check my email. The first thing I read was a letter from my daughter Caroline. On the day I left, it read, Dad, I didn't believe you at first. I had to check my mom's Facebook. Not only was what she did there, but also links to the events of her fellow travelers. It was shocking when I finally understood what the salt and pepper meant. It was a nine-day and intimate swap. My husband Don says you had no choice but to leave. There was no way you could accept what she did. Are you okay? Both my sons also wrote letters, both expressing similar views. They also couldn't believe their mother did it until they saw it for themselves. Both wanted me to contact them. They said they needed to hear my voice to make sure I was holding up. I opened Caroline's second letter written on the Sunday after she went to meet her mother. Dad, it was a nightmare. I stood there watching the plane land. I noticed our local television station with cameras. One of the women mom went with was the wife of the president of Southeast Missouri State University. Four of them were met immediately after leaving the plane. Everyone had to call a taxi. Mom was relieved it wasn't hers but knew she was caught as soon as she saw me. I just told her that dad knows and left. She didn't believe me. I took her home. I helped carry my suitcases in and saw a trinket rack filled with ten mini jars of black pepper. As soon as I understood your idea, I burst out laughing. I gave her a printout of your letter to all of us with the new email address blacked out. Mom threw it in the trash without reading it. I walked out, leaving her alone. Love you, Caroline. I went to the KFVS12 website and watched several of their video stories about this whole case. All five women's reputations were destroyed given the amount of publicity. The city was furious at the image that university employees were portraying. I went to the Southeast Missourian website because I had a subscription and read all the articles on the topic. This was a favorite topic of discussion on the Speak Out forum. It was time to contact my lawyer again. Then I went back to emails. The following was dated the first Tuesday after I left. Hello, Father. Mom is upset. She probably thought she could talk to you on Monday where you worked. After she cooled down, she was told that you quit. She didn't believe it. She was sitting outside waiting for you to come out. Finally, she spoke to security. Their response was, have you seen his truck? She returned home and found that the trailer had disappeared. I went online and found that your name was removed from all accounts and credit cards. Finally, I looked around the house and found that your tools and equipment were missing. Then she found what I gave her in the trash. It must have gotten to her because she couldn't understand why you left most of your clothes behind. Mom tried to write to you, but the letters were returned. She called your lawyer this morning, and before she could ask any questions, he asked where she could serve the divorce petition. I just got off the phone with her, and she said, but I did it for him. I just need to talk to him so he understands. That's not a good enough reason for divorce. I told her to look at her Facebook page and hung up. Now I block her calls. Please call me. Love you, Caroline. I sent Caroline a text message. Are you free to talk? A moment later, my phone rang. Hi Caroline, it's nice to hear your voice, I said. I just read your second letter. Thank God, just hearing your voice makes me know you're okay, my daughter replied. How long have you known about her special trips? About two months before Dean left for spring training. My hunting trip was a ruse so I could get everything set up, I answered. 
All five of us men worked together to gather evidence on all of them. The only thing left to do was to share ownership of the house with your mother. After paying off our current debts, I took half of the remainder and removed my name from everything. Mom isn't coping with it at all. I don't think she ever expected to be found out. She still believes what she did was okay, Caroline explained. She claimed she didn't publish anything. That's how liberal-minded people think, I replied. They are not responsible for their behavior. They have a certain view of reality that has nothing to do with the facts. Ask her in a moment of clarity whether she would be okay with me doing what she did. You and I both know that this would be unacceptable. Where are you now, and what are you doing? My brothers will want to know too. Whoever hears from you first should tell the others, Caroline said. Good news, you're going to be a grandfather soon. Congratulations. How did Don react? I asked. After he got over his excitement, he got serious about it. He signed up for an online accounting certificate course. He's working hard on his courses now, Caroline said. He's always enjoyed it, but he's been putting it off. We're lucky that I'm finishing mine in June. I'm hoping to find a new job with a higher salary to help pay off my student loans. Just FYI, I'm building my new home and in the process of buying a business. Other than that, I'm still on staff. Won't say anything more until the divorce is finalized. Love you and send my love to Don and your brothers, I said before saying goodbye. I left a message on William Connor's answering machine asking him to call me back. Everything went as I expected. Lauren fought the divorce, arguing that no harm was actually done because it was just a night. I had to ask myself why I even married her. William said she couldn't stop him. We made her burn because of her adultery. He warned that it could drag on for months, depending on the judge. I may have to go back to talk to him. I said I'm in no hurry. Word spread about what we were doing with the barn, so people came to see it. Some offered their services. Everyone was impressed with the quality of the work. This gave me the idea to turn it into a business. CJ started to get really into it. I've always liked working with my hands. The logging company leveled all the land around the barn. The job turned out to be more than they expected. While I was at the lawyers with Jeannie setting up the corporation and purchasing the store, I asked CJ to break ground on a new workshop and garage. It was within walking distance from the house. With the completion of the third floor, we brought in plumbers, gas, and heating specialists to do their job. CJ understood why I left the extra height between the floors. This allowed us to hide communications between the floors. It took us two days to install the ceilings. My new house now had eight-foot high ceilings. While the electricians did their work, CJ and I laid the flooring in the attic and installed the sheathing so we could add insulation to the sides of the barn walls. I called a glass company to install all the windows and exterior doors. The window for the space on the landing had to be made to order. At this time, we built a raised deck floor with storage and installed black iron railings around it. I told him that I had ordered an awning that automatically extends over it when the sun is at its zenith. I had to laugh when CJ said after work one Saturday that he had never worked so hard or enjoyed work so much in his life. Once that's completed, he said, my mom has already made a list of things she wants me to do. Every time he had a day off, he spent too much on professional tools and equipment. CJ, it takes a special person to do this, someone who sees value in what they create with their hands. It took me many years to understand that, I said seriously. Build a career doing what you love. I've learned. Now go away, and I'll see you on Monday. At $20 an hour, CJ was making good money, and he knew it. He also realized that it was a bigger job than most. Insulators and drywall installation crews were expected to begin next week. CJ and I would start working on the workshop since the floor was already poured. We prepared our support beams and installed them before pouring the floor. Once this is done, it will also have a five-foot walkway around it. We will take possession of the store on Monday. It is currently closed for renovations. When it opens, we will call it DJ's. We negotiated with the gas companies and got the best offer, allowing them to compete. As a result, we will have six prepaid gas stations instead of two, with an additional percentage of profit margin on every gallon. 
there will be no more losses due to people leaving without payment. I had just finished showering and loading laundry into the built-in washing machine when I saw Jeannie drive up. I was wearing only clean blue jeans. She was carrying a huge picnic basket as she walked towards the trailer. At that moment, I noticed her for the first time as a woman. It made me realize that I was ready to move on. Jeannie held up well, childbirth didn't change her figure much. She was slim, and her face was quite narrow. Her curly red hair was shoulder length, and she had an attractive smile that reflected her warm heart. Her hazel eyes were still sparkling. She had good breasts, but not so large that it was immediately noticeable. She still had a figure that made people pay attention to her. I wondered about the fool who let her get away. The food wasn't anything special, but it was great, egg salad sandwiches with onions and chips, and two bottles of popular wine. She seemed interested in the color scheme I was planning for the interior of the house. We walked around discussing it. I don't know how she did it, but she got me to open up and talk. She liked the landing with the huge window where the doors to the attic used to be, as it had a clear view of the creek behind it. Jeannie noted that this space could be used for many things. It was already long after midnight when she left. I thought men were supposed to pursue women, Dean said. CJ, Jeannie does everything to let you know that she is free. If a girl like her started courting me, I wouldn't hesitate. CJ, I'm not single. I'm still going through a divorce. Until it's finalized, it wouldn't be fair to involve anyone, I replied. People will talk behind my back, saying I'm taking advantage of them. I value Jeannie too highly to let that happen. Besides, I haven't been on a date in years. Yes, you have, CJ countered. In my opinion, you already went on a picnic together, which lasted until late at night. Damn, I thought, the guy is right. We had county inspectors checking out the barn and workshop on Friday. Before we could use the workshop, it had to be approved by the fire inspector. The electricians installed a separate meter for it. I had already told CJ that he would finally get the weekend off. The plasterers and insulators still had to finish their work next week. I was going to get commercial rip saws, band saws, and routers over the weekend. We had just finished when CJ's mom called. Since it was our first two-day weekend since starting work, she invited me to a barbecue the next day. I agreed and asked what I should bring. She said, cold beer. My parents think you're pretty special, CJ said. You gave me a chance at Jeannie's word. I've learned a lot these last ten weeks, and they know it. It's just their way of saying thank you. It will be interesting to see when something other than your loose work clothes. Yeah, sure, we both know Jeannie will be there. She's your mom's best friend. Those two are up to something, I said with a smile. They probably have one more thing they want me to do before Jeannie takes over the store again. CJ started humming Matchmaker, Matchmaker from the movie Fiddler on the Roof as he walked to his car, laughing. It was my favorite movie. After I put a few things away, I went into the bedroom to watch the only channel I had. I don't remember what happened then, I immediately fell asleep. On Saturday morning, I drove to the nearest town and had breakfast at a restaurant before getting my hair cut. I had my beard and mustache done professionally. She sold me a haircut kit to help me maintain this condition. I like this new look. I went to Macy's and bought a couple of outfits, pants and shirts for going out and a pair of casual elastic shoes. It's good that I tried on the pants, I had to go for sizes smaller. I looked at myself in the mirror in the fitting room. My beer belly had disappeared, my abdominal muscles had become stronger, and I looked much leaner. I took another pair of trousers, a pair of jeans, as well as socks and underwear. I began to take pride in my appearance again. The last stop was for metal tables, hardware, and wood to begin building the many cabinets. My kitchen will be made of oak, which was the biggest part of the job. I arranged delivery for Monday. While we were waiting for delivery, we could build some warehouses to stock essential goods. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I arrived at CJ's parents' house. After showering and changing clothes, CJ came out to meet me. You look great, boss. He laughed as I grabbed the beer to carry it inside. Have the price tags been removed? We entered together. The young lady was introduced to me as Jeannie's daughter, Lindia. 
She made me blush by saying, so you're the man my mom is flirting with. She saw my reaction and laughed. CJ's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Ed Peterson, were next, and Mrs. Peterson's name was in. I was surprised that they were about my age. They pointed to their children who were with their friends. I began to feel that this was not a trick, and I relaxed. They had a beautiful house. As more and more people came, I got to know them. It turned out that several of them were what I called curious onlookers at the barn. Within an hour, I had six business cards from people who wanted quotes for large jobs they wanted done. I told everyone that I would start building cabinets, and that would take me at least two months before I could get back to them. Everyone seemed willing to wait. Jeannie and her parents were the last to arrive. Her father and mother walked past me without recognizing me, which made Jeannie laugh. I let my hair grow out and my beard grow out because my soon-to-be ex hated it. Since I spent most of my time working, I lost sight of myself. Now I'm back to some normalcy. Jeannie came up to me and took my hand in hers. Jeannie looked stunning. She pinned her hair behind her ears, applied her makeup and lipstick effectively. She wore a knee-length white dress that showed off her figure, highlighting her curves. She dressed in a way that emphasized her femininity, and it worked. I complimented her on the way she looked. We were still holding hands when we caught up with her parents. Mom, Dad, don't you recognize him? Asked Jeannie. Dad, he's just like you. When he's passionate about something, he ignores everything around him until he's done. Stuart Johnson, Jeannie's father, said, well, damn it, you look good, son. I wouldn't recognize you without your long hair and bushy beard. Mary Stewart added, Dean, don't mind him. I have pictures of him looking like an ogre because he worked too hard. Jeannie tried to get me to help her convince you to slow down and take a break. We've been together almost 40 years, and the only thing that slowed Stewart down was old age. Thanks, Mom, Jeannie said sarcastically. For that matter, tell it like it is. Someone finally gave me a cold beer. For a weak beer like Bud Light, at least it was cold. I think Stuart noticed my glance. I brought two 12 packs of my favorite strong beer, Guinness, he said. I turned to Jeannie and asked, are you drinking this? I haven't even tried it, she replied. She took it and Stuart and I went to find a couple of large beer glasses. He liked a lot of foam, I didn't. Everyone got what they wanted because we poured it ourselves. We're back to women, Mary said. Can you imagine? For years we had this idiot who liked to drink tar meat Dean, and it gives your father some credibility. Now I can never get him to stop drinking that stuff. Most beers are meant to be drunk quickly. A good strong beer is a real man's beer to drink slowly, I said defensively. It fills you up and doesn't make you want to drink more. Were you a car salesman before you moved here? Mary asked, because that sounds like complete bull. Well, it's like with a woman's breasts. One is not enough, but three is too much, I replied with a smile. I delivered the line, and Mary blushed. Both Jeannie and Stuart burst into laughter. Mom, it seems Dean knows how to return the favor, Jeannie said with a wide smile. You'll have to be careful with him. I helped Ed. Who did the cooking? He slowly cooked pork, beef, and chicken. I set to work on the flat fryer and prepare a selection of vegetables. She had a huge pile of half-cooked potatoes. I asked her what her plan was. She replied, surprise me. I asked her to bring a bag of red onions if there was one, and she brought it. I got down to business. Jeannie in and watched as I cut the vegetables, keeping them separate from the potatoes. It seemed my skill with a knife surprised them. Ed told me I had 30 minutes before he started serving food. I said, great. I cut up the potatoes for quick frying in oil. Just before transferring them to the serving bowls, I added paprika, salt, pepper, onion, and cheese. I made the grilled salad with equal parts of three types of peppers, snow peas, peeled okra, corn, onions, and tofu. After grilling, I coated it lightly with a homemade dressing of Worcestershire sauce, honey, mustard, and vinegar. This was my take on the theme of Mexican cuisine. Both dishes were simple but a hit. Someone said Jeannie now has a man who can really cook. Later, 
when most of the guests had left, four of us sat down at the table. And Ed thanked Jeannie and me for our help. I don't remember who suggested it, but it was strongly recommended that we all go to Branson for the weekend before the store reopened. I listened to their arguments and eventually agreed. Later, as Ed walked me to my truck, he said, I think you should know that Stu told me earlier that he's been waiting almost 20 years for a man like you to be in his daughter's life. It was only after I had changed into my pajama pants that someone knocked on my door. I should have known it was Jeannie. Do I always have to make the first move? She asked. Without words, I picked her up and carried her to bed. She stayed the night, and neither of us slept much. I woke up to Jeannie talking on the phone. She had already started making coffee. A few minutes later, Lindia arrived with takeout from the town diner and a change of clothes for her mother. This was what was needed. While Jeannie was in the bathroom, I talked to Lindia. Mom got divorced six years ago, Lindia explained. You're the first person she's been interested in since then. You are the complete opposite of my father. She's never looked at a man the way she looked at you last night. I think she's in love, so please don't hurt her. I told Lindia my story. When Jeannie came out of the shower, I showed her the pictures of my children that were stored on my laptop. Of course, Lindia wanted to see them too. My mobile phone rang. I noticed it was Caroline, so I answered and put it on speaker. Hi, Dad, my daughter said. I just thought you should catch up on the latest news. Mom is no longer fighting the divorce, so it is approved. All that remains is to confirm the decision on the house. What made her change her mind? I asked seriously. Looks like five ladies picked up an unexpected gift from one guy during their trip. Somehow it became public domain. It made her realize that she could never get you back. Seeing the reaction and ridicule, she saw for the first time what she had done. Now she's even ashamed. The university is trying to force her to resign. They won't succeed, but they will do everything they can to make her leave. How does she cope with emotions? I asked. Now that she had to see her behavior from the other side? Dad, she's a complete nervous wreck. I'm still so angry about what she did that I don't even care. Everything our mother taught us was thrown away by her behavior, my daughter explained. She got the house appraised and agreed to buy her share. You just need to sign the paperwork with a lawyer and receive a check. You can stay here overnight when you arrive. I'll have to look at my schedule to see when I can come, I replied. Maybe it will be best if I stay in a hotel because I won't be coming alone. I looked at Jeannie and Lindia, their eyes sparkling with bright smiles. Dad, you met someone? That's great! Caroline said with delight. What is her name and what is she like? My name is Jeannie. I have a 16-year-old daughter named Lindia. Ask whatever you want. I walked over and poured myself more coffee, allowing Jeannie and Caroline to chat. Relationships cannot be forced to develop, they must be allowed to develop on their own whenever possible. Lindia came up to me and hugged me tightly. Jeannie and I have been friends since childhood, said Lindia. From her, I learn what kind of person you are. She said that you always think things through before you say or do something. Grandma says you look a lot like my grandfather. If you decide that this relationship is serious, I will support you to the end. I smiled and hugged her back. Jeannie and Caroline were still in contact, and from the sounds of the conversation, they were on the road to friendship. So I took Lindia on a tour of the house. During it, she told me that she was interested in interior design. I challenged her, showing her graphical representations of the areas of each room and their basic shapes on my laptop for each of the three levels and the huge landing between the second and third floors. I'd love to see what she could do. Her eyes lit up. Why? she asked. Every home is better when it has a woman's touch, I answered. The cabinets in the kitchen and bathroom will be made of oak. I'm going to hang pink and red stained glass lamps over the kitchen island. Remember that countertops and tiles should complement the overall look of the rooms. Good speech, Lindia replied. That's because I know what my mother likes. I didn't say a word, although it was tempting. When we returned, Caroline and Jeannie were still talking. Lindia just expressed her hopes. Jeannie and Lindia decided that I needed to see a little of what the area had to offer, 
so we headed out to enjoy the day before it got too hot to suffocate. Jeannie sat next to me in the truck. Whenever Lindia had the opportunity, she would introduce me as her mother's boyfriend, taking full advantage of it. Lindia controlled the music, and she chose New Country, which I noted was like old rock and roll but with jazz elements. The three of us got into a lively discussion about singers and bands from different times. One day, Jeannie's parents found out about this and told her that we were all invited to Sunday dinner. I wasn't ready for family dinners, so I suggested they join us and we'd go out to a restaurant. We met them at a place they liked. It was nice to see that Stu, like me, was a meat and potatoes person. We both ordered steaks and mashed potatoes with brown gravy. He had green beans, I had lima beans. Of course, we both ordered our stouts. Mary and Lindia ordered the patty and fries, while Jeannie chose fried chicken, salad, and applesauce. Both ladies ordered a glass of wine. During lunch, Lindia mentioned a challenge I'd given her, so Stu and I mostly listened as the ladies gave their opinions. When I returned to the trailer the next morning, still in what he called my dressy clothes, I told CJ to get the coffee ready while I changed. CJ, we have six customers in line waiting for our offers as soon as we finish, I said. If we go for it, it means regular tax deductions, health insurance, and all that. Are you interested or not? To be competitive, we don't get overtime. If we mess up, it comes out of our pocket. I estimate the labor costs to pay you $20 an hour. Dean, my mother asked me the same thing, he said. I told her if you're going to do this, I'm with you because you pay me a good salary and teach me a trade. I know there will always be downturns when you're self-employed. When we have work, we will work six days a week maximum. I don't think I'll ever want to work six days a week again after this, I said. Besides, I don't think Jeannie will let me. CJ broke out into a smile. Lindia texted me yesterday morning. He opened the text on his phone and handed it to me. It said, finally, what I dreamed of happened. Mom and Dean spent the night together. I laughed. At lunchtime, Jeannie brought us lunch. CJ and I were spoiled. She spent the afternoon helping us, first unpacking the equipment, then putting away the packaging while we set up the metal tables and got ready to go. With her help, by 6 o'clock in the evening, we had completed preparations for the launch in the morning. Before closing for the night, I did one more thing. Using my laptop with a new printer, I printed out the dimensions, positions, and layouts for a complete kitchen. I pinned the 3D image to a bulletin board in a small office. Jeannie's eyes lit up as I explained to her the design of the pots and pans drawers, a bookcase-style food rack that could be rotated at the touch of a button for access from two sides. On one side, there would be a broom closet with hooks on top where we could hang our coats, a narrow tall cabinet for baking sheets, cutting boards, and metal grids, a spice cabinet with a recessed door that allowed the most used spices to be kept in plain sight while the rest were hidden behind it. It was located next to the stove. The upper cabinet doors would have red and pink stained glass inserts set into the wood. Any woman would die for a kitchen like this. Are you sure you can build it as good as it looks? Jeannie asked. My ex now has a kitchen about half the size in our old house done in this style. This will be the first one I make with stained glass. Craftsmen are making two pendant lamps in the same style that will hang above the island. That's part of the reason she agreed to buy out my share rather than sell the house, I replied. She had everything but threw it all away for wild, unbridled night, Jeannie said, becoming serious. What the hell was her problem? Her love for me was not strong enough to stop her. That says it all, I replied. That's why it was so easy for me to walk away and not look back. I don't think she ever loved me the way a person should love. We looked at each other when I said this. It must have hit her hard. She had tears in her eyes, just like me. I wondered why. Dean, I think you hit a home run with that remark, Jeannie said. After seeing the end of your marriage, I now understand why mine ended. For too long, I thought I had failed. The problem wasn't me, it was him. We didn't share the same views on what love was. I didn't understand this point of view until now. Jeannie and I later agreed that this moment became the foundation of our relationship, knowing that we both have the same idea of what love is. 
we spent the rest of the week cutting frames for the kitchen cabinets and assembling them. They all had adjustable shelves. On Thursday afternoon, when CJ had to continue working until we got back, Jeannie and I headed to Cape Girardeau. We asked Lindia if she wanted to come with us, and she wisely declined. Jeannie and I drove about halfway before we checked into a decent hotel. There was a bar with a small band playing live music, and we spent the evening dancing. During a break in one of the performances, the musicians joined our table, and we struck up an informal conversation. I asked them if they knew the song Years From Now, which was popularized by the group Dr. Hook. They knew it, so when they got back on stage, they started the set with this song. Jeannie and I were on the dance floor. Later, we were lying on the bed when I asked her if I could scratch my chin. She looked at me like I was crazy and said sure, go ahead. One can only imagine where this led. She later told me that she wouldn't fall for it again. I laughed. We had just left William Connor's office. I held the settlement in my hand. He was holding funds and trust until I signed the documents. Since all outstanding issues had been settled, divorce papers could now be issued. We still had a couple of hours before Caroline and Don got off work. Jeannie asked me to show her where I used to live, so we drove past. I couldn't help but notice that the lawn was not well maintained by my standards. We drove into a shopping center and stopped at a jewelry store. Jeannie wanted to know why. Well, I think it's time to give you a promise ring if you're ready, I said. Lindia and your father let me know that they support me. She was ready. Finding a quiet spot at a restaurant in Cape Girardeau on Friday was like finding a needle in a haystack. Caroline and I agreed to meet at the Hickory House in Jackson at 5 o'clock. They were already waiting when we arrived. I was surprised because right behind Caroline and Don were my two sons. Dean, being a catcher, was called up as a substitute due to injury and was passing through here. His batting average was .270, which couldn't hurt. Daniel had a few days off, so he could be here. I looked at Jeannie's smile and knew she was aware. Lindia was also aware, which is why she spoke next. My God, Dad, you look strong, Caroline said. Your daddy body is gone. Love your new look. Are you going to keep it? Jeannie, this is Caroline and her husband Don. The two behind them are my oldest, Daniel, and the other one is Dean, I said. Yes, Caroline, I will keep it. My waist has shrunk six inches, and I'm not as soft as I used to be. Dinner and conversation were very pleasant. Jeannie was questioned a bit, but she did well. Me too. As soon as everyone found out that I was converting the barn into a house, Jeannie explained how we met and showed them a photo of me in work clothes carrying wood. I didn't know, but she was photographing the barn in various stages as it was being remodeled, explaining that it had over 3,000 square feet on the main floor. The second and third floors are smaller due to the huge landing between the floors. When the ladies excused themselves to go to the restroom, my sons expressed their approval of Jeannie. Dad, it's been years since you looked this young, Dean said. Hard work seems to be good for you. You don't seem so tense anymore. I like the job, I explained. When I finish the house, I will completely move into construction. Jeannie will manage the store. I already have six major projects up for tender. I told Don that if he would allow it, I would like to build all the children's furniture. He was delighted. Not only will it be of the best quality, but Sharon and he will be the envy of all our friends. Don couldn't keep a secret if he tried, he would have told Caroline the news right away when she returned. I was surprised that the children didn't bring up the topic of their mother. It didn't happen until we got back to Caroline and Don's house. Jeannie wanted a family photo with the kids and me. Then Don wanted a photo of the four of us with Jeannie. Jeannie asked him to make one for us using her cell phone. Caroline was making coffee when her mother called. I only heard one side of the conversation, but my daughter seemed cold and distant. I heard Caroline tell her mother that she needed to get professional help. While she was busy, I asked my sons how they were getting along with their mother. Both answered the same way, we don't communicate. I was about to say something, but she nudged me lightly with her foot, so I remained silent. The six of us spent the rest of the evening playing double rummy with two decks of cards. Later, when we returned to our hotel room, 
Chi and I talked. Their wounds are still fresh, Chi said. You have to understand that they didn't have the slightest idea. Even your departure was a culture shock for them. When we were in the women's room, Caroline told me that she was having a hard time without a stone in her life. She wanted to know if I could explain why Lauren did what she did. I suggested that maybe Lauren felt like something was missing in her life. Wobbles, Caroline said. Her mother not only did this to my father, but to all of us. You know, Jeannie, Caroline would never tell me that, I replied. It makes me realize that I need to sit down and explain my feelings to my kids and Don. Tomorrow, they'll want answers, so I'll have to do some serious thinking. Lindia watched my marriage to my ex slowly fall apart, so she was expecting a breakup when it finally happened, she explained. She was relieved when it was over and was my rock as I rebuilt my life. She saw how withdrawn I was until you met me that day. The moment I got home that night, the first thing she said was, Who is he? I said, That's what you mean. She replied that she hadn't seen me smile like that in years. Your children are faced with this suddenly. Honestly, my love, I didn't see you as a beautiful woman until you came with a picnic basket, I said. Then I also dealt with all this. The outfit you wore that day made me wonder what kind of fool would lose something like that. CJ should have pointed out to me that this was already our first date. It hit me like a brick when I realized you were following me. Why? asked G. I think deep down Lauren left the impression that I wasn't good enough. I was trying to understand why, I replied. Then you came to me, accepting me when I doubted my worth as a man. G crawled into my arms, holding me tightly, leaving me alone with my thoughts. I think she realized how much she saved me by preventing me from going where I was headed. Each of us helped the other free ourselves from the past. This was bound to happen sooner or later. It happened completely unexpectedly, G and I met Lauren. We slept in a little longer on a lazy Saturday morning, so we decided to go to Golden Corral for brunch. Lauren walked past me as I picked out my first plate of food. She was there with one of the ladies from the university whom I had never met before. I smiled because it was obvious that she didn't recognize me. I was wearing off-brand jeans from Walmart, a fitted t-shirt I bought online layered over a long-sleeved denim button-down shirt, and cowboy boots. With my new hairstyle, full beard, and weight loss, I was not the same person I once was. G, who was of North African and European descent, had a darker natural skin color and dressed accordingly. I often heard her say that she was a white pepper. I pointed to my ex to prepare Jeannie in case something happened. G cleverly noted that Lauren's face and body expressed the stress she was under and said she was on the verge of a breakdown. Since I met G, she has introduced me to the cuisine of her culture. As a result, I gradually reduced my intake of starches, fats, and salt, expanding my taste preferences. G was more like her mother, as her father was a true southerner. I had yet to find out how they met. Duh, I can't believe it's you, Dennis Port said, pulling out a chair and sitting down across from us. You look like you did when you were young. I laughed. Dennis, I want you to meet G. G, I've known Dennis since he was a kid. We went to school together. Dennis and G quickly hit it off, and soon he was telling her about our childhood antics. He could always put a funny spin on events and soon made her laugh. Jeannie noticed Lauren looking at us with a surprised look on her face. I told Dennis what I was doing with the old place. G showed him the photos on her phone. This led to the story of how we dismantled his father's barn to build our fort while his father was away on one of his trips. My father let his father spank me for this. Finally, my ex found the courage to come to our table. Dean, is that really you? Lauren asked. I thought you left town. I left, I replied. He sent me back to complete some business and see the children. Lauren, this is my girlfriend, G, and of course, you know Dennis. Can we talk privately about a few things? Lauren asked calmly, standing up. I said, no need. Our marriage ended when you went on your first intim vacation over ten years ago. When I found out what you were doing, I got tested for STDs. Thank God they came back clean. I left because I didn't want to be reminded of you. I gave my clothes to the Salvation Army because they no longer fit me. 
live your life the way you want and let me live in peace and tranquility. I sat back down as she walked away crying. I looked at Jeannie, and she had a smile on her face. I can't believe you are so cold. It's so unlike you, she said. Dennis laughed. Gee, this man will give his shirt off his back if he really needs it and expects nothing in return. Lauren built herself a bridge too far for Dean to ever cross. The day he found out, he came to talk to me. When he told me what she said, I knew she was dead in his eyes if he could prove it. I gave him the land at a cheap price as a token of gratitude for all he had done for me and my wife over the years. What I lost in market value, he has already reimbursed me twice. If he feels manipulated, he will simply end it and leave. We learn to read people early. We may get burned once, but they will never do it to us again. If she wanted that lifestyle, Lauren could honestly have had it. We would have just gotten divorced ten years earlier, I said. For me, life is too valuable to waste. She took my hand. I couldn't agree with you more. We won't have a big wedding, just two witnesses and a magistrate when you're ready. We continued eating. Dennis took his plate and joined us. When G stood up to get more, Dennis said bluntly, She's beautiful, Dean. My wife Gina will love her. Lauren should have known when she saw you that you chose someone better. G is more class in one finger than Lauren ever had. It brought a big smile to my face and boosted my self-esteem. I was still explaining how we met when G returned. Of course, she had to give her two cents. Dennis watched us with pleasure because we were already finishing each other's sentences. Before we left, Dennis talked us into agreeing to come over for after-dinner drinks so G could meet Gina. When we arrived at my daughter's house, a surprise awaited us. When we walked into the living room, they hung a banner that said, Welcome to the family, Jeannie. I looked at her and saw that she had tears in her eyes. Don saw the promise ring last night and said, The four of us decided that this should be celebrated properly. We'll do it, I said. But first, I think I need to explain my actions since I found out. This may help you all make a decision about your mother. Over the next hour, I listed every little detail I could think of, explaining the rawness of my emotions, the doubts about my masculinity, the fear that I might have contracted AIDS, and how I became an advocate for myself. I thought it would be easier to walk away and not look back, so I failed as their father because, for the first time in my life, I put myself first. G pointed out that when I left, I did as much harm to you four as your mother did to me. She also said that this was in addition to everything you had to deal with due to the public exposure of your mother's behavior. Dad, Daniel said, the four of us talked last night. We realized a few things. First of all, you were just as stunned as we were. Previously, if we had problems, we turned to you for a solution. You were alone because you kept your problems to yourself. You always put us first. Our mother's value system changed when she became the head of the department. Like you, we didn't see it. It was Caroline who explained it to us best. Mom's behavior showed us that in her eyes, we were nothing more than second class compared to her liberal friends. That's what many of my Democratic friends say, Dean added. We didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party left us. They became something that I cannot associate myself with. This was a real revelation for us. Neither of us can honestly say that we know who our mother is now, and this is the biggest shock for everyone. Sharon said, we all agreed that if G and you got married, we would be honored to call her mom. G couldn't help herself. Neither of us expected this. Everything became clear at a glance, as it should be if you are a family. The Keels have lost one and gained another, but we have become stronger. We were safe. We arrived at Gina and Dennis's place around 7.30 in the evening. I stopped to buy Gina a beautiful bouquet of seasonal flowers. It was a tradition I started after their wedding. I only did this when I was invited. If I came to visit for a short time, I did not bring anything. Little did we know that they had invited some of my childhood friends to come meet G. They finished the basement, turning it into a huge room with tile floors. It was used for many informal parties where everyone brought their own bottle. We spent the night dancing. Jeannie really was the star of the evening, although everyone also admired the shape I was in. Many men teased me because their wives pestered them, hinting that with a little effort, they too could look good. 
they retaliated by saying it required a divorce. Before the evening ended, G, Gina, and a few others became friends. We met the kids for breakfast on Sunday morning before leaving. Everyone made us promise that they would be one of the first to see the barn when it was finished. I took the long way to Interstate 55. Surprisingly, it's been a busy few days, Jeannie began. I never thought it would end the way it did. The photos we took with the kids were wonderful. Lindio will want a detailed report when we get back. I was hoping to find acceptance, but I feel a little overwhelmed by their openness and trust. My children have not lost trust in me even after everything that happened, I answered. Their vision of our attitude made it easier to accept them, but their actions amazed me. They gave me insight into what happened between their mother and me. They allowed me to see aspects that I had not seen before. You did what was needed at the time, Dean. The wisest thing you did was not spoken but was heard by everyone, G said. The fact that you didn't humiliate their mother even after everything she did to the family showed a lot about your honesty. I turned and looked at her with a loving smile as she moved closer and rested her head on my shoulder. You surprise me, Dean, G continued. Every day I spend with you, I find new reasons to love you more. We were still an hour from home when G's phone rang, waking her up. Lindia called first, then her mother. It was clear that, whether we were tired or not, Sunday dinner was scheduled for six, and we were both expected. We arrived at G's parents' house 15 minutes before six to find cars parked everywhere. Mary and Stu had called the whole family home. I learned that G has five siblings, two brothers and three sisters. I only had one sister. Those who were able to come did. Lindia was the first to notice her mother's new promise ring. As soon as she found an opportunity, she pulled me aside. I was standing with Stu, enjoying a cold dark stout, when she took my hand and led me away. I saw the ring, Dean, Lindia said quietly. I just want you to know that it's not Dean anymore, it's Dad. When you and my mother get married, I hope that you will find a way so that I can take your last name. I seemed to react emotionally because she immediately hugged me tightly. As soon as she left, Stu asked me about it. It was a moment of connection, nothing more and nothing less, I responded. Then Lindia shouted for everyone to be quiet because she had an important message. You all met Dean, my mom's boyfriend, Lindia began, but what you don't know is that mom received a promise ring this weekend. From this day on, he is my dad. Understand who and what are you? Stu laughed with joy. It's more than you think. Lindia did not acknowledge her father as a father for many years. Everyone in the family knew it. I looked for G and saw her standing with her mother, both crying. I asked Stu, what am I missing? I'll tell you about it in private later, he replied. Jeannie went home with Lindia. I returned to my mobile home and was impressed. CJ did a great job. The entire structure of the kitchen cabinets was ready. Each element was assembled and ready for final finishing. Even an island was built. The pre-cut stained glass arrived on Friday. He unpacked everything and repacked it to make sure everything arrived safely. This allowed us to start lining the parts that would be visible with oak veneer and install the oak frame on which the doors would hang. He even drilled holes for small wooden plugs that we will use to reinforce the exterior oak frame during installation. Lindia arrived around 4.30 on Monday afternoon, bringing her laptop. CJ noticed that she was very happy. We both turned off our equipment when she entered the workshop. Dad, Lindia said, I have two plans ready for you, both completely different. If you have time. CJ cursed under his breath. I smiled, hinting that I would explain later, and walked over to Lindia. Let's go to the trailer, you can show me there, I replied. Both of her shed plans were beautiful. I had to admit that I hadn't thought through the plant in that much detail myself. She showed the exterior of a barn that had been painted two different colors. The added shutters gave it a touch of sophistication. The roof, which needed to be re-roofed, came in two different styles. Each room was depicted as if it was already fully furnished. Both concepts looked fantastic, but I said, if I were selling this place, either option would do. But the house needs one room reworked. Which room, Dad, and why? Lindia asked. The master bedroom. 
My father understood that usually a woman manages the house and children. He believed that the master bedroom should be soft to the touch to create a natural feeling of refuge for her, so it should reflect those elements. Your two samples don't do that. For a man, it's just a place to sleep, I explained. Do you want it done this way for my mom? Lindia asked with a smile. You're smart for a teenager, I said, smiling. Remodel the master bedroom, then introduce them to your mom. Get her opinion, but don't tell her that we will choose the option she picks. As I stood up to go out to the studio, I said, Lindia, make sure the bedroom you choose for yourself reflects what you want. I was back in the shop, explaining to CJ how we would cut, shape, and insert glass into each door on top when Lindia burst into my arms, sobbing and saying, I love you, Dad. I just held her until she calmed down. CJ waited until Lindia left. Dean, Lindia has had a hard life. Six years ago, she found her father beating her mother and found herself between them. She spent more than a week in the hospital. She had suffered abuse for so long that she believed she deserved it. It was Lindia who forced them to get a divorce, CJ revealed. From the day I met you, she asked me millions of questions about you because she felt like she had to protect her mother again. You never know, she also learned to understand that not all men are like her father. Thanks, CJ. I replied. Several years ago, I had to get my sister out of a similar situation. You answered a lot of questions. Men who abuse do not love, for them, it's all about control and power. I then explained what Lindia and I were doing in the trailer and why. He told me that for a week she had been pestering him almost to death with questions. She told him that she was working on a special project and wanted to make sure she did everything right. I explained to CJ that interior design adds value to a place and is used when planning or designing multifamily buildings. The rest of the week, we worked as hard as we could. The logging company was still cutting and hauling wood. The good news was that wholesale lumber prices had increased in the market. Lindia called me on Thursday to let me know she was done with the design and that it had been approved by both mother and daughter. It was in my email inbox. She and I didn't see each other much as she was busy ordering equipment and learning a new computer system and accounting program. That night, I organized and paid for all the flooring to be installed starting the following week. I sent a copy of Lindia's video to the painting company I hired. They would start painting the inside of the barn tomorrow. It was easier to seal and paint when the floors weren't finished yet. I added shutters to my to-do list. Once the flooring was installed, painting completed, and cabinets installed, the plumbers returned to install toilets, sinks, showers, tubs, and faucets according to Lindia's design. It took CJ and me another week to install the interior doors, light fixtures, and ceiling molding. I hired a crew to put on the roof and install the shutters. The logging company took another week to finish. Then the pavers came in to pave the driveway and create a parking space with a turning pad on the side. The grand opening of DJJ's store two weeks later was a success. Sales during the first 24 hours exceeded all expectations. The contractor's estimated costs were overestimated. G and I were pleased. Additional assortment and variety increased attendance. G changed her work hours and started working from 6 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. If sales kept up, Stu was right. We had underestimated our cash flow by about a quarter. We took the weekend to go to Branson. It was in the butterfly atrium, with butterflies from all over the world, that I got down on one knee and proposed. He filmed it to Anne's delight. Ed got Lindia's phone number and sent her the video. It only took her two minutes to text me back, asking, Have you set a date yet? I replied, Not yet, smart girl. On the Sunday after we got back, we stopped by Jeannie's parents' house to pick them up. We met Lindia at the barn, it was time to show them our new home. She knew what it would look like, but she didn't know that I let Lindia decide how to furnish it. As the items arrived, CJ and I carried them to the rooms Lindia had chosen. CJ and Lindia called a group of their friends together to set things up. I gave her a budget and emphasized the importance of quality, not a single chipboard. Mary and Stu were delighted with the house. How open and welcoming it was impressed them the most. Mary couldn't believe that G would have such a kitchen. It had a view of most of the living room, 
dining room, and family room. The entire first floor was warm and welcoming. It felt like all the pieces were in place, but it was still easy to access the laundry room, which had a built-in laundry chute on each floor where we could dump dirty clothes. You had to go through it to get into the boiler room or go outside. On the other side of the boiler room, there was a semi-toilet. Each bedroom had its own huge bathroom and dressing room with a sitting area. Lingia chose the first one for herself and proudly talked about every detail she chose. But it was the area on the landing that we decided to use as an open library that caught our attention. Both knew that wildlife would be attracted to the meadow we created. This place was ideal for observation. They asked me what I was going to do with the mobile home. I'll sell it if I can, I said. When Ji saw the master bedroom, she was shocked. Lindia chose well. The pastel colors created a soft and inviting look. The four-poster bed, matching dresser, and two nightstands were already set up. The his and hers closets on either side of the master bathroom amazed Ji with their size. We haven't furnished the other three bedrooms yet. We sat by the island in the kitchen. Lindia ran out to the trailer to fetch five glasses, a two-liter bottle of cola, and the crown royal I had hidden. She was surprised when I poured her a drink. A toast to Lindia, to thank her for her work and efforts in bringing us all together, I said. I gave her a certain amount of money, and she stayed within the budget. Jeannie's eyes filled with pride. You helped Dean do all this without me knowing? When? How? Lindia did this from our home. If she liked something, she would email Dean to get his approval before ordering and paying, Stu said. She really impressed me with her knowledge and skill. She was looking for quality and value. It took us another four weeks to complete the landscaping, laying down an acre of lawn around the house and sowing clover throughout the rest of the property. Stu plowed it, sowed the seeds, and within two weeks, CJ and I completed our first commercial project. He needed two weeks to complete the work for his mother. I started work on some nursery furniture for Caroline. She was planning a wedding. This would be the first time the whole family would be together. We settled things with the logging company. It turned out that after all the calculations, I earned enough to cover our salaries and the costs of buying and building a house. My ex-wife Lauren had suffered a nervous breakdown and was now on medical leave. Only time and recognition of her actions could heal her. It reminded me that each of us must find our own way to overcome. Jeannie came into the workshop after work, looking worried. I stopped what I was doing and turned off the equipment. You look worried, I said, hugging her. What did the doctor say? Jeannie's face broke into a smile. You'll have to make two more sets. Two sets of what? I asked, not understanding how this had anything to do with the doctor. Children's furniture, she said with a huge smile. The doctor thinks he heard two heartbeats. Hopefully, one will be salt and the other will be pepper. To this day, Stu and I joke about whether it was a wedding at gunpoint. What do you think of our story today? I think the situation is not a pleasant one on my husband's part because it's not pleasant to cheat on your husband with one of the employees every year. What's your opinion? Write in the comments. Until new videos.